I'm Brian Simpson. I'm Brent Manning, and we're the co-founders of Riverbend Malt House. Brian and I have a strong background in sustainability, and when we looked at the craft beer industry, we realized that the farmer was disconnected from this rapidly expanding business opportunity. Dr. David Marshall at the USDA ARS lab was really helpful in a number of different ways, helping us understand the agronomics of growing barley and also which varieties would work best in our area, and also helped to connect us to a network of growers that were interested in a niche product. While it is possible to make alcohol from raw grains, the process is extremely inefficient. That's where the maltster comes in. So the process of malting takes approximately seven days to execute and involves three main steps, steeping, germinating, and kilning. When the barley is harvested, it's typically at 11% moisture content. Over the course of steeping, we raise that moisture content through three wet-dry cycles. That initiates the release of enzymes that break down the cell walls inside each kernel. After steeping, we go into the floor malting stage, which is active germination on the floor. During that time, we're actually raking the malt to get warm air out, oxygen in, and keep a really, truly hand-done artisan product. To stop the germination process, we go into the third and final phase, which is called kilning where a large volume of warm air is applied to the grain bed to dry it down and deactivate those enzymes. And in the final stage of kilning, actually develop a little bit of color and flavor as well by applying higher temperature air to the grain bed. So after the kilning process, the grain is now considered malt. And we have one step left, we have to clean it. And this cleaning process involves several different machines which remove the rootlet material and any thin kernels from the finished product. Once we clean the grain, we bag it up into 50 pound bags or one ton super sacks and ship it to breweries throughout the southeast. The significance of the New Belgium order was pretty exciting for us. It, it, it represented an exciting opportunity to connect a North Carolina farmer and his uh, heirloom rye grain that's been growing in the south since the Civil War to 37 states across the nation, which was by far our largest distribution to date. This is a Hop Kitchen series beer called Rye PA. This beer was built around uh, Riverbend's rye malt. Uh, I, was, I brewed with their rye malt a couple times before and I was always very impressed by how it tasted and how it performed. The amount of work that they put into making this happen for us is astonishing. They delivered what we asked for on time and we were able to make the beer uh, in time to hit the market with. And that's amazing. Definitely makes me want to work with them again. And they're just great guys. The road ahead for Riverbend is, is a pretty exciting one. When we first started out, we sized our operation to basically provide the raw materials to a 10 barrel system here in Asheville. As demand rose, we scaled up our operations to meet the demands of several breweries of that size. The next step for us will just be broadening our network of farmers as well as the scale of our operations. The, the process that Riverbend Malt has, has developed over the last three years creates an artisan product uh, that can be available to brewers in our region that they can't get anywhere else on the planet. That offers them an opportunity to use a unique malt and create unique beer profiles like no other place in the world. 